Hi folks, welcome back to Year of Ambira. It's Andy here with video 11. I'm going to begin with some playing so you can see the kind of things that we could end up with, with the approach that I'm going to teach you today. Um, and hopefully you'll be inspired to stick around and make sense of everything that I'm working through. As always, there's going to be resources to accompany this video in your uh, subscription at umbira.online. So let's begin with some playing. Excellent. Um, so what have we got going on there? We've taken the note pattern from last week and applied it to the left hand. There's a few extra decisions that I've made in what I was playing, um, and you're going to understand those by the end of this video. You could start with this um, approach by taking any note pattern. It might be that you have a variation that you're already playing for a completely different song, and you look at what's going on in the left hand or the right hand, which we're going to come to a little bit later in this video, um, and you see that there's a regular note pattern across uh, each of the four 12-beat parts of the song. We're taking da 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 from the last video. Um, that will be notated for you in the accompanying resources that you can download at mbira.online. And we're superimposing that note pattern onto progression seven. And I'm going to show you some really basic ways we can do that, intermediate and then more advanced. And it's going to unlock your approach um, to creating your own variations and moving about more freely on the instrument. You could create your own note pattern. You could start off with a, a series of 12 boxes and tip a glass of rice over it and see where the rice ends up. And you can have strokes there and where there's no rice, you have rests. You could toss a coin, you can any random way of creating note patterns, um, or you can take the one that I'm suggesting, and there's seven strokes in this 12 beat pattern. You can start the pattern on any one of those seven strokes. Um, but for us today, we'll maintain the first starting point and main starting point that I looked at in the last video that you'll see in, in the resources. So let's begin this pattern um, somewhere in our song structure. I'm going to go for the first beat on the third chord in each part of the song. The reason that I've chose that point is because that's where the um, Ho Show marks the beat. Um, and the first beat of a chord is a really good place to um, find where the beat lands. Um, it's a really good orientation point. It corresponds with that up moment of the mouse ran up the clock, where which we looked at much earlier in the, I think it was in the Mbira Deep Dive videos. So our up moment is on chord five, and in one instance on chord four in this song. So if we take our pattern, da, 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 and start it on, let's say the last chord five, we would end up if we were playing root notes with so this is um just taking a sequence of three chords our last chord first chord and second chord you can use some words to help you remember the pattern I like playing music, yes, I like playing music, I like playing music, yes, and so on. Let me take that uh, note pattern and play it throughout the whole song structure. Uh, just take note, this is a really basic approach, it's not going to sound very rewarding, but it's our way into the kind of playing that I was doing at the beginning of this video. So our last chord... And now we're in the song structure. We're going to play the we play the last chord, 
first chord, second chord, and now we're on the third chord. Oh, I haven't got a note three here, so I'm going to go for this one. Let's go from the beginning again, or from this last chord. back in. And then back in again. Um, because our note three that I was trying to find there slips off the end, why don't we take this and play it down an octave and then we've got all of the notes, um, but not in the left hand. If we've got a three here, that three that we'd expect to find over here somewhere is over here. So you're going to find me playing that one where I was playing this one. I like playing music. Yes, I like playing music. I like playing music, yes, I like playing music. Cool, so we've started um, looking at just root notes. We could play octave pairs. Um, these threes are going to be awkward again. So I've played an octave pair of fives. I'm just moving up and down, trying to vary which um, notes I'm playing from each octave pair. Um, you'll notice that I played my ones here rather than here. Um, this pair of ones has a really similar relationship to this pair of twos and this pair of threes. Uh, if we go up in the octaves from four, let's say. Five, six, seven, one, two, three. Excellent. You can hear the, the relationship between them. Cool. So we've looked at root notes. We've looked at octave pairs. What happens if we start to introduce our um, note circles for chord one? Quick reminder. Two. Three. I'll pop that one in as well. Four. Five. Six. Um, there is no chord six in this song, so we don't need to worry about that one. And seven. In this instance, our note circle is coming in to the fours, which is the fifth of note seven, rather than out to the twos, which we played in Nomi Musasa Yamatari. Excellent. So seven, so we've got these fours. What happens then if we start to go random, um, and this will really force you to make some quite quick decisions in your playing. Um, keep the same note pattern, apply to the same song structure, but instead of playing just root notes in uh, one octave, across two octaves, um, and with the fifths as well, we could end up with something like this. Oops. 
so it's already starting to sound quite pretty um you might want to put your um some notes from the cascade and a right hand against that just give you a point of orientation oh sorry And it's sounding interesting. Excellent. Um, but what I want you to start thinking about today is what are the values of those notes that you're choosing during each chord? It might be that through your playing, random, um, maintaining the note pattern in the same position on the song structure, you end up with a one part of the song that sounds quite nice. It might be that you ended up with this for your first three chords. So the last chord in the song first chord in the song and second chord in the song you end up with this pattern um, and you're like what what happens if I apply that those values of those notes across each of the four parts of the song so the first two notes that I played was the root and it's fifth. Next three notes, root, root, and fifth. And then we had a root, uh, yep, and a fifth. Root, fifth, root, root, fifth, root, fifth. Root, fifth, root, root, fifth, root, fifth. If I take those note values now and apply them to all four parts of the song, I'd end up with. I'll pop in some other random right hand notes just to fill it out a bit. Cool. Um, we'll look at those in a second. So I've got something going on here that's got similar values or the same values across each four parts of the song and it uses uh, two registers here. So this values idea is really interesting and we can also look at restricting our, our note range that we're playing from. So on my left hand now I'm going to play this range of notes. What have I got? Four, five, six, seven, one, two. So there's no note three in there. Um, so I'm going to have to substitute something um, during a chord three to go up in here. And then I'm going to play notes five and seven for that chord. Three, four, five, six, seven. It's third and it's fifth. Um, let's have a look at what I end up with. So our first chord, I'm going to play a root and a fifth. Cool. Uh, that's the, the last chord in the song structure, but that's how, where we're beginning. I like, for playing mu, of playing music, I'm gonna end up playing fifth and root of chord seven. And then for zik, yes, so the last two strokes, I like playing mu, zik, yes. I'm gonna go for the third and the fifth. Um, and that means I can maintain thirds and fifths for that chord in each part, the second chord in each part, um, during chord threes as well, I can play a third and the fifth, which is over here. I don't have a root on this side. Um, so that's how I end up fixing that problem. So we end up with, I like playing music, yes I like playing music, yes I like playing music, yes I like music. 
with some uh, right hand action as well. So what we've got going on up here now is repeating note values across all four parts of the song and note range restriction. Um, and in the introduction to this video, I played that pattern and then I started to introduce the, the first variation that I came up with that uh, sounded like this. Which has got the same note pattern but different note values spanning uh, a wider range of notes. So we're starting off restricting and it feels like it's filling out more. Let me show you that again. So starting with this restricted um, variation, which has got repeating note values and then changing the note values to encompass a wider range of notes. So there's something that connects the two variations, so it makes sense to the listener, um, but we end up expanding and um, adding more, more depth to the variation. But the, the restricted one's quite pretty in itself. Excellent. So that's left hand. Let's look at the right hand now. What happens if we... Um, I'm going to take a popular left hand variation for Bangiza and use that as a background for exploring some patterns in the right hand that have got this da 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 um note pattern and then i'm going to do some combining the left hand and the right hand as well but let's have a look at the right hand against this left hand here that you might be familiar with So last chord, we're going to play two strokes. Um, what happens if I... Do, do, do. Let me start actually at the beginning of the song um, as we normally notate it. So on that chord seven. And if I go for its fifth, which is note four, we're going to end up with... Um, I like playing mu. So I'm going to start with a playing mu stroke here. And then I'll go to the next chord. Sick, yes. Well, I'll play its root. So I start on a fifth and then root. And then we're going to go for fifth of chord four. If I take those note values, fifth, root, fifth, and apply that across the whole song structure. Let's listen to what happens. Uh, fifth, 
Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, up here. Quite pretty. We end up with a small cascading run of notes. Da 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 Now the same happens if we don't start on the, the fifth, but if we start on the root and then alternate root, fifth and root, giving us sorry. Yes, I like playing music. Yes, I like playing music. Yes, I like playing music. Yes, I like. So we've got two little approaches there uh, fifth root and fifth, or root, fifth, and root. And they end up falling in small sections. Um, and we could alternate, if we wanted, between the fifth, sorry, root, fifth, and root. And then the other one. Um, so we end up producing our whole cascade, the notes of which would be this. Oh, sorry, I'm starting on the fifth. So same note choices, um, we start on our fifth root and fifth pattern and then for the next part of the song we play root, fifth and root, next part of the song, uh, fifth, root and fifth and last part of the song, root here or root here, root and fifth and root. So we're effectively alternating fifth root, fifth root, fifth root, all the way through the song, giving us... Instead of continuously cascading down, we could stick with one of those smaller options. So we end up with something like this. I jumped out of into the cascade and then I went back to um, so we end up with some nice variation and it's all related excellent so this is a really great way of coming up with a pattern just for your thumb or index finger um, you could go back to our fingertip freedom videos and choose random uh, lows and highs something like this It 
might be that you cho choose high, 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 low, 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 or random, high, low, high, low, low, high, high, whatever. Um, you can come up with your own patterns there from the fingertip freedom exercises. The last thing that I wanted to show you today, which is really pretty, is taking the note values that we played in the left hand. Let's take this variation. And finding them up here in the right hand. So we end up playing octave pairs. Um, fives, twos. Uh, I can't play two different sevens over here in the right hand. So why don't I go... Um, yeah, four, seven, four for that chord. And when I get to chord one... Excellent. So I could have something like this. Threes. I'm playing up octave pairs here. quite gymnastic um if you find it difficult great give it a go do it at a speed that you've got high chance of success at and it's really going to open up your playing and your independence this last exercise coming up with a pattern in the left hand same note values over here and playing octave pairs across registers really pretty you do see it in traditional variations um and if you can develop that kind of independence being able to, oh, so I don't think independence is the right word, uh, that kind of relationship between your left hand, right hands, then it's really going to add to your playing. Excellent. This week, we've looked at taking the note pattern from last week and looking at loads of different applications that you could apply to any note pattern, any variation, start that note pattern at any point in any um, song structure, um, restricting the note choices, playing roots, playing octave pairs, playing random, and um, note values is a really important one, and we're going to be exploring that more in the future. Next week, I'm going to, is more theoretical, it's just looking at this particular note pattern that we've chosen, and some of the magic behind it, it's really fascinating. Um, I hope that you stick around for that, and stick around, uh, give yourself some time with these exercises that we've looked at today. All of the notation is in the um, Ambira Online subscription. You can access that there. Any questions, reach out. Thanks very much, everybody.